So in biology, because we're dealing with live organisms, sometimes you want to observe living organisms either in their habitat or in the laboratory setting. For cells, because we cannot see them with the naked eye, we must make use of the microscope in order to observe living cells. And so what we're going to do now is I'm going to show you how we prepare to observe a sample of living cells using what we call a wet mount. And we're going to do that both for an example of a plant cell and an example of an animal cell. For the plant cell, we're going to use an aquatic plant called Elodia. For the animal cell, we're going to use humans. We are animals, and therefore we have examples of cells, and we're going to take some cheek cells for that. So let's start with our Elodia cell. And what we're going to do is, again, we're going to create something called a wet mount. There are two types of slides that you will see in biology. One is when you're observing living organisms, a wet mount, the other is when you want to have long-term slides to review over and over and over and over, we call those semi-permanent. We only use semi-permanent when we, what we need to observe does not need to have um, any type of living component to it. Okay? So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take a microscope slide and we're going to add just a few drops of distilled water. Okay? Next, we're going to take our plant cell and I'm going to pick just a leaf from the plant itself. Then I'm going to take this and put it in the distilled water. And then lastly, we want to protect our sample. So we're going to put a cover slip over the sample. Now, at this point, it's important that you engage in proper technique. Because we're looking under the microscope, if half your sample is in air and half your sample is in water, you will not be able to focus on the full sample because air and water have different refractive indexes. So what we want to do is we want to ensure that we remove all the air from our sample. So what you're going to do is you're going to angle your cover slip, slide it until it touches the water, and then let it drop. What that is going to do is force all the air from under the cover slide as it slowly drops onto our sample. And now you have a nice wet mount with no air bubbles. You now can take this and put it underneath the microscope where it's now ready for viewing. So the next sample we're going to do is the animal cell. And again, we're going to use humans as the animal. So we're going to take a sample of our cheek cells in order to observe how they're different from the plant cells. So in this particular case, again, I start with my blank slide. I then I'm going to add a few drops of water to my slide. Then using a fresh, clean toothpick, I'm going to slowly swab my cheeks. And we want to just gently swab your cheeks because cheek cells will readily slough off when they're under slight abrasive forces. So no need to draw blood as you're doing this. Then I'm going to take my sample and I'm going to slowly stir the edge of the toothpick in the water. Now again, you may not see anything immediately in the water, but remember these are very tiny objects. So if you swabbed properly, you will have tons of cheek cells that you will find in your sample. Okay. Then we want to color our cheek cells. So although you look at our cheeks and it looks like they are red, that is simply the color of the blood that's feeding all those cheek cells. The cheek cells themselves do not have any color associated with it. So to make it easier for us to be able to observe the cheek cells, we want to dye them. And we want to dye them with methylene blue. And all we need to do is just put one drop on our sample. And as previously, we want to apply the same technique to remove any air bubbles from our samples. So again, we're going to angle our cover slip until it hits the water. And then we're going to slowly let it drop. 
Now we're ready to actually view our cheek cells under the microscope.